Hi, this is your host Apni Bharti and back to once again our prediction videos and today we have with us our wizard from Armory, Isaac Mascara, he is co-founder and CTO of Armory. Isaac, first of all, it's great to see you again. Yeah, it's great to see you again as well. Thank you for having me and taking the time. I appreciate it. Yes. Of course, we will talk about the predictions, but before we do that, I would love for you to just explain what is Armory doing these days? Tell us about the company. So uh, we started Armory uh, about four years ago, almost five years ago now, really to help bring uh, you know Spinnaker to the enterprise. But what the, the, the bigger story for Armory is that we want to enable safe, secure, scalable deployments for the enterprise uh, you know, these organizations that have, uh, you know, 20, 30,000 developers and really need to figure out how to uh, standardize and build safe roads into production or standardized roads into production that everybody can use and deliver software into the world. Because ultimately, if you look at the next 10 to 20 years, what will differentiate the Fortune 100 from everybody else is how good and quick they can get software out into their customers' hands. Awesome. Now, go grab your crystal ball and tell us what prediction do you have. I do assume that you are going to talk about CI CD <laughs> and how you know these things should become part of developers pipeline, but let's just see what you have to say there. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, the you know, because you mentioned CI CD, you know, the whole point of CD is to get your software onto some compute platform. And so I think the first thing for me is, uh, and, and the, my, in my crystal ball, what I see is that the clouds will continue to innovate and pour billions of dollars into R&D and will create new targets beyond Kubernetes. And we're already starting to see that. There's actually, with the enterprises we work with, uh, there's very small amount of workloads on Kubernetes. But I think in the next uh, couple of years, you're going to see that there's going to be these new targets where people can deploy to that will be easier and faster and more secure than what Kubernetes is today. And that will present, I think, a challenge for the enterprises because, you know, ultimately your CI CD system needs to be able to deploy into the best targets for your business units, for your teams. And if your CI CD system can't do that or keep up with the technology, uh, then you're going to be left behind and you're going to go slower. And, you know, back to my first statement uh, that, I was gonna, that I was saying around enterprises will be defined uh, uh, based on how good they can do this. And so I think building your own CI CD system will soon be out of touch because you will not be able to keep up with this innovation. Uh, and we're already moving past Kubernetes. You already see that in the organizations. And I think that will get even stronger and bigger uh, in the coming years. My next prediction is around GitOps. And you've probably heard some of these terms today, in particular, again, to Kubernetes. Uh, that adoption will continue to grow, but I think what you're gonna see is that enterprises are gonna start applying the GitOps mentality to the rest of their organizations, all of their other non-Kubernetes deployments. Now, the reason they're doing this is when you're dealing with thousands of developers, well, they create a significant amount of code. They create a, a you know hundreds of deployments per day. How do you audit that? How do you make that safe? How do you make that scalable? Well, Git and GitOps provides a great piece of, uh, of fundamentals around a process that allow you to, to kind of get to that scale, reach that auditability, be able to enforce compliance at the code level where developers are, not uh, where operations uh, folks are, but where developers are, and, and, and shift all of those security audit compliance concerns to the left. And so you'll see a huge kind of uptake in GitOps and it'll be applied everywhere. Uh, very much like Agile was in the early 2000s, right? So Agile is not a process, it's a set of fundamentals. Um, and there's things like Kanban, or there's things like Scrum, and right, and now it's just universally done that way where everybody's doing, you know, a certain type of Agile process. I think you're gonna see the same thing for GitOps here in the next few years. Uh, we, you know, we, we refer to it as different terms, things like infrastructure as code, policy as code, uh, you've seen those things, everything as code. It will fall under really the the big umbrella that is being called GitOps. And in fact, 
the GitOps working group in the CNCF just got started in terms of defining what GitOps really is. So we're in very early days around GitOps and, and the value it provides to the enterprise, but I see a huge uptick in that. And I think the last thing um, is uh, being able to see and that CIOs and CTOs historically have centralized a lot of things, right? They've made a lot of decisions for the entire org. For example, hey, we're all gonna use Kubernetes or we're all gonna use vSphere, right? Those types of decisions can no longer be made because the, the enterprises are too complex. When you're dealing with thousands of developers, what you will see is that all of them need different types of infrastructure in order to get their jobs done, right? It's not a one size fits all. And so what that will force CIOs and CTOs to do is to start decentralizing decisions, decentralizing teams, decentralizing tools and processes so that each team can make uh, the best decision for themselves. And so you'll start seeing that. And we are already starting to see that, right? We're seeing that with microservices. Microservices at its core is about loosely coupled architectures. And so now your organizational structure We'll also have to follow that as well. Back to Armory, can you tell me what is going to be the focus of the company uh, in uh, 2021? You guys focus on helping you know companies get on you know with their continuous delivery you know pipeline, but uh, it has kind of things are getting matured. So any new challenges for the company or you know in general, what will be the focus? Yeah. Well, th thanks for asking. Um, so our big push here in 2021 is really around providing Spinnaker as a cloud offering. One of the other kind of trends that we're seeing is that enterprises and, and mid-tier companies are, are really trying to focus on their core value in terms of creating software and delegating out to vendors, right? And so part of that means, you know, being able to onboard quickly. So for us at Armory, I think you'll see a lot more of our offerings be cloud first or SaaS first so that you can consume it online without having to stand up anything on your own and your own infrastructure. And I think that's a trend that's been going on. So you'll see us push uh, there too. And I think the enterprises are getting more comfortable with delegating that out to a vendor who may not be inside of your account or, or even in your data center. Uh, and then, you know, back to the GitOps uh, movement, I think we have a lot of components, right? We have pipelines as code, infrastructure as code. Uh, we have policy as code. Uh, I think what you'll also see us do is really organize these features and products and package them up in a way that fits under the GitOps umbrella. Uh, again, through our online and cloud offering, which will be a huge push for us here in 2021. Awesome. Isaac, thank you once again uh, for not only sharing those predictions, but also sharing with us where you know, the whole city is moving, what is going to be the focus of Armory. Uh, and uh, since a lot of work is going on in this space and continuous delivery is going to become you know, a critical piece of you know, work. I mean, it is already a critical piece of uh, someone's pipeline. Uh, and especially with the... Uh, 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 Continuous Delivery Foundation, a lot of work will be uh, done in this space. So I would love to talk to you again. So once again, thank you. And uh, I would love to talk to you again, maybe in 2021. Absolutely. I'd love to talk to you again as well. Thank you again for the time. I appreciate it.